Task 2 of the EdTPA requires candidates to video record multiple segments of lessons. Going through this process provides you an opportunity to see your teaching methods from another point of view. In today's video, I'll provide you with a few tips you can employ before recording your segments. You'll need to practice with a few recording devices. You have several options. A digital camcorder, an iPad, or a smartphone will do just fine. No matter what you choose, you should always use a tripod. Talk to your library media specialist. She or he might have equipment for you to use and might even be willing to run the equipment. Explain what you're doing and ask for advice at least a week in advance. Collect permission forms. Make sure you have proof that it's okay to record your students. If there's a student that can't be in your video, gently and privately explain to the student why you need to move him or her out of the camera angle, or just simply adjust the camera angle to exclude the student you can't film. If you inadvertently include a student for whom you do not have permission to film, you may use software to blur the individual. Keep in mind, the more the student moves around, the more editing you have to do. It's best to get the student out of the camera angle entirely. Practice recording at different angles. The light in the room impacts video quality. Light shouldn't be behind the subject. Move the camera or the subject or add more lights if possible. If you use one of our camcorder kits, make sure all the pieces are there. You will need a tripod, adapter, and a camcorder kit. Inside the case, you'll find the camcorder, the wireless microphone, and some extra batteries. Always put fresh batteries in the wireless microphone before recording. Turn the receiver on and select channel 1. Plug the receiver into the mic in port on the camcorder. Turn the transmitter on and select channel 1. Double check this. If you forget this step, there will be no audio. Clip the transmitter to your belt, waist, or pocket. Clip the lapel end to your collar. This setup is a great reason to record early to desensitize you and your students. If you're not using one of our camcorder kits, you'll need to make sure the device is much closer to the person or group speaking. If your audio ends up muffled, you'll have to include a lot of captioning. It's much easier to make sure the device is close enough to capture quality audio. Press record. I know it seems silly, but remind yourself. Put up a sign. Have a helper remind you. You might be nervous and forget. Hold your device in landscape mode. If you hold it in portrait mode, you'll capture less of the classroom and your final copy will have black bars down the side. It's a waste of visual space. Always use a tripod. If you have someone pan for you, be sure they have an idea of where you're moving and that they need to include students in the footage. Record a lot of footage. This helps you find the right placement, desensitizes your students, and gives you more choices when it's time to pick your clips. Place your camera off to the side at least halfway up the front of the room. Your evaluator will need to know who you're talking to and how they're reacting to you. Remember, your recordings must be continuous, no splicing clips together. Depending on your handbook, you can upload multiple clips, but within these clips, you can't do any splicing. Your clips should show interactions between you and your class. Do not lecture. Your clips should show you building rapport, asking open-ended questions that stimulate higher order thinking, and checking for understanding. Intentionally build these things into your lessons. If you just tell yourself you'll check for understanding, you won't do it with fidelity, or you'll skip it entirely just because you're nervous. Build rapport, open-ended questions, and formative assessments into your lesson plans. Read your handbook for specific requirements for each clip. Some handbooks call for different samples in each clip. Create a backup of your original video before giving the recording device back. Wouldn't you be crushed if you needed to start fresh only to find out that you deleted the original footage? Back up your footage to an external hard drive, for example. Uploading to public locations is strictly prohibited and would jeopardize your entire portfolio. Start working with your technology early. The last thing you need is to have to prepare for student teaching, write EdTPA commentary, and then learn how to record and edit video. That's too much on your plate. If you need technical help, first Google or YouTube your question. Chances are someone's already asked it. 
If that doesn't work, or if it's more specific to the EdTPA, contact your EdTPA coordination team. You can reach us via email at edtpa at uwplatt.edu or send us your question on Facebook or Twitter. Good luck. We'll see you at the finish line.